Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through the uh, the script um, because Lula is not on yet, but once she jumps in, we'll we'll switch roles. Uh, Mark is or Jason is Lisa on. Hang on one second. That's Lula right there. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, uh, she's getting ready to get in. Jason, can you send her this script again, please? And I'll, yep. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, let's see. All right. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance, the Fairfax County Athletic Council needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It's a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of the Fairfax County Athletic Council is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating, that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all other members. Accordingly, I'm going to ask Jason to conduct a roll call, ask each member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure you, that you can hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear every other member. Jason. Good evening, Good evening everybody. Uh, Braddock District, Marsha Pape Daniels. Uh, Braddock Alternate, Marco Mira. Uh, Drainsville, uh, Greg Beckwith or alternate Brian Lewis. Uh, Hunter Mill District, Jeremy Lee. Or alternate Harold Leff. Let me be the first. I'm here mm -hmm. in beautiful downtown Hunter Mill District. Awesome, thanks Harold. Uh, Lee District, Lisa Mickey. Or alternate Bill Bright. I am here from my home in Lee District. Awesome, thanks Bill. Uh, Mason District, Barbara Lowry. I'm here in my home in Mason District. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, Mount Vernon District, Lester Munson. Uh, here from my home in Alexandria. Thank you, sir. Um, alternate, Bob Kirk. Uh, Providence District, Kelly Ego Asawala. <clears throat> Are you there, Kelly? Yeah, I'm here. I, it keeps cutting out, but I'm here from my home in Falls Church. Got it. We can hear you. So thank you. Okay. Uh, Springfield District, Mike Thompson. Yeah, I'm here from my office in Alexandria. Thank you, sir. Um, Springfield alternate, Mark Hilburn. Sully District, Gary Flather. I'm here from my home in uh, Sully District. And Sully alternate, Mark Abbott. I'm here from my home in Chantilly. Thank you. Uh, diversity at large, Mark Fernandez. Or alternate Eric Sohn. Uh, member at large, Catherine Quinn. Or alternate Amory Swope. I'm here from my house in Reston. Thanks, Amory. Uh, Town of Clifton, Jeff Stein. Uh, Town of Herndon, Roland Taylor. Roland Taylor's here. Town of Herndon at home. Thank you, sir. Uh, Town of Vienna, Tom Hanton. I'm here in my home in Vienna. Thank you, sir. Uh, baseball Council, Rob Honey. I'm here from my home in Centerville. Thank you, sir. Uh, basketball Council, Steve Bergstrom. <laughs> or alternate, Stu Clark. Uh, fast pitch softball, Susie Williamson. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm ready to play some ball. Thanks, Susie. Um, alternate Ryan Buchanan. Uh, football Council, Mark Miena. I'm here from Duck, North Carolina. 
Thanks, Mark. Um, football alternate Ted Hollingsworth. Uh, Lacrosse Council Marianne Wagner. Or alternate Dave Paddock. Uh, slow pitch softball Christine Idup. Uh, Soccer Council Lula Bauer. Thought I saw Lula sign on. Uh, she doesn't look like she's on now. Um, alternate Trish Moxie. I'm here from my home in Springfield. Thanks, Trish. Uh, volleyball Council Rob Bailey. Uh, here from Denver, Colorado, and I probably can't stay for the whole meeting. Okay, no worries. Thanks. And Emory Swobe alternate still here. Um, women's sports programs Jenny Cantwell or alternate Hillary Richardson. Hillary is here calling from her home office in Reston. Awesome. Thanks, Hillary. Um, Fairfax County Park Authority. Uh, Mike Thompson still here. Kurt Lewis. And Fairfax County School Board Megan McLaughlin. Here. Thanks, Megan. Um, Bill Curran. Here. Uh, and Vicki Garner. Here from Gatehouse. And Neighborhood Community Services, Lloyd Tucker. Here from my office in Ponino. Uh, Karen Navisato. Uh, I don't think we've got that one. Uh, Mar NCS Mark Martino. I am here from home. And anybody else that I missed that signed on? All right, that's it. Uh, we have a quorum. All right. Uh, at this point, I'll pass the virtual gavel to our secretary, Lisa Mickey, so I may be heard to make the requisite motion. I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the Fairfax County Athletic Council. Are there any, any objections? objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Second, having established that each member's voice may be heard by every other member, we must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures. The fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for the public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for Fairfax County Athletic Council to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting. And that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of the Fairfax County Athletic Council and the physical presence of the public cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that the Fairfax County Athletic Council may conduct this meeting electronically via Microsoft Teams and that the public may access this meeting by calling 1-571-429-5982, conference ID 660-850-113, and the pound sign. It is so moved. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved. And finally, it is next required that all of the matters addressed on today's agenda must address the emergency itself. Hey, necessary. Gary, can I, this is Mike Thompson for the record. I just want to interrupt you real quick so that we don't get in trouble later with the lawyers. I'll second his motions that have been, that that we voted on or the, didn't object two, to or whatever. The t okay, for the two uh, motions that were made. Yes. Got it. Sorry, you, thanks, Mike. All right, thank you, Mike. Uh, finally, I'll repeat that. Finally, it is next required that all the matters addressed on today's agenda must address the emergency itself are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the Fairfax County Athletic Council lawful purposes, duties and responsibilities. It is so moved. Waiting for a second. Mike Thompson. Uh, Mark Miano. Mark Miano, second. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the motion is approved. All right. And Jason, we do have a quorum, correct? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. All right. 
so let's um did lula was lula able to get on yet it looks like she's on right now yeah can you hear us lula Can you hear me? No. Now. Oh, you can hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Gary, thank you so much for stepping in for that. I appreciate that so much. So thank you. The, we, we do have a quorum. Are there any citizens um, to address the council? If not, we'll move on to presentations to the council. <coughs> So, Miss Mr. Miena. Yes. Uh, uh, th th thank, thank you all. Unfortunately, I'm joining by audio. Um, my internet went out. A shark ate the line, at the, ate the cable. So, um, I hope you can. Can you hear me? Okay, because I hear some background, background noise. Yeah. Hey, Mark. I'm gonna mute everybody, and then if you want to take yourself off mute, that works. Pardon me. Okay, if you can unmute Mark, you should be good now. There should be no echoes. If he's on an audio only, like on a phone, I'm I'm trying to look it up on online real quick, but he's gonna need the right thing to punch on his phone since okay. you muted him. He didn't hit mute on his phone. See, so he's got a we need to give him the code or you need to unmute him specifically. All right, let me see this. Any idea how to do that, Mike? I'm not seeing an option to unmute anybody. Can you unmute everybody and then we'll get a No, hold on. It's, um, to quickly get off mute, the person dialed into the meeting would simply need to press six. So, Mark, if you can hear us, at least this thing says that uh, it looks like it's either, it looks like it's star six, that star six will unmute your phone. He just texted me and said he's not muted. Well, he is. <laughs> Jason, try yeah, yeah. Uh, try unmuting everybody and, and then we can look all... for the whoever is highlighted. That's the background noise. You can mute that one person. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm not seeing an unmute all. It just says mute all. Well, you can uh, you can call the person out. It's OK yeah. to do that. <laughs> call that one person out. Mark, go ahead and start your presentation and then Jason's going to try to figure out who the echo is coming from. I think but, we're also, yeah. I think what Jason is saying is that he he can mute everybody. He can't unmute everybody. Right. But everybody so unless Mark themselves. either hangs up and dials back in or tries like a star six to unmute himself from the system, we may not be able to hear him. Oh, that's terrible. Um, Mark, if you, Mark if you heard that, go ahead and hang up and dial back in. We'll wait for you. Sorry, Lula, I'm taking over your presentation. <laughs> You're doing great. I don't see him either. In the, uh... Lula, you want to do the uh, approval of the minutes while we're waiting? Oh, so we're, we're just going to move on. That sound. That's fine. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, everybody's received the minutes. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. I second. Any objections? So moved. 
I'm going to keep going until we can tell that he's back on. And Jason, just go ahead and, and stop me. Um, so I, I just recently learned that Chris Pulley's uh, community outreach position has been eliminated. So I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge Chris for his community outreach work through Fairfax County's youth sports organizations. Um, I was in on Chris Pulley's interview panel uh, and recall to this day, many, many years ago, his interview was memorably passionate. I knew it it was without a question that it's it was that that passion continued to resonate over over the years through the sports um, sports organization. Um, I can personally speak for the Lee and the Mount Vernon district, and I know there's areas in Herndon and Reston. There are pockets that we will sorely miss his uh, contributions and his his program. Um, I, I I just will say that. He's been such an asset to the to, to parts of our community. When the entire uh, community shut down, sports organization, when the entire country shut down because of COVID, um, he continued. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear everybody. I've been hearing everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you now. Okay. Um, so okay. Mark, I'm, I'm just going to finish up here. It won't take me much longer, and then we will we will go back to okay. the, your presentation. Right. So basically, I just I just wanted to say that once COVID hit and everything shut down, if it wasn't for the 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 community outreach work, Chris Pulley's work, um, there'd be a lot a lot of families in a number of our communities that would have gone um, unfed. He he was instrumental in in organizing free food meals for our, our um, communities, um, uh, food trucks, food drives. He was just incredibly instrumental. And in, in our pockets, there are families that can literally, I mean, families that struggle paying for registration fees. And he started this, this um, um, sports equipment uh, initiative that and on the Route 1 corridor was just is absolutely needed. So anyway, I wanted to take this minute just to acknowledge Chris Pulley and all the work that he's done. And I'm hoping that as we move down the road that the county will see the importance of the community outreach in terms of the athletic uh, organizations and perhaps bring some of those programs back. So, um, I just wanted to publicly acknowledge Chris. Um, and so we will revert back to Mark Miena. I'm here. Anyway, I apologize for not uh, being on uh, Teams, but um, just for the benefit of everybody, uh, we obviously were shocked with the, the, the passing of Steve McLaughlin suddenly. And uh, I have a, a just, a couple of paragraphs to read and a recommendation to propose, but for the benefit of the new people that are on the council or ones that haven't really seen us do a lot, uh, it's hard to summarize over four decades of service with Steve, but th th this is a big deal. He was a major impact um, to, to everyone in every magisterial district and every sport in advancing to where we are now. We haven't tackled uh, uh, huge issues here lately. So I, I just wanted to preface that for some of the new folks so because of COVID and the virtual meetings that you didn't really get a chance a lot of times to interface as much as we normally did in person. So I'll go ahead and begin. Uh, and my intention was to send this to everybody to, to have, but the internet, like I said, a shark bit the internet uh, uh, cable and uh, I can't send it now, but I'll send it to everybody later. Uh, the purpose of taking time to address the full council is to recognize and reflect on the outstanding accomplishments, dedicated volunteer service, and inspiring leadership our friend Stephen McLaughlin gave during his long career that spanned into four decades as a volunteer athletic council member, executive committeeman, and multi-term chairman. Steve, as we all know, suddenly passed away last month while on vacation. 
in a conversation with him the Wednesday before he died, I was talking with him. He said, I'm going to practice this time off routine and, and vacation for my announced retirement as director of administration with the International Trade Commission this July. He said, I'm going to practice this. A very, very sad day that continues to shock everyone that, that knew him. He was the epitome of personality and physical activity with his routines of playing basketball twice a week, softball in season, and hiking trails throughout the country uh, as, as one of his hobbies. So it really, really makes you wonder, you know, <laughs> do all the right things and something happens. The world is a lesser place without Steve, especially at, at our side in these meetings with a smiling face and well-timed anecdotes. Steve's service on the Athletic Council began with the appoint when he was appointed by then Providence District Supervisor Jerry Connolly to represent the Pro uh, Providence District on the Athletic Council, where he has served in the same position under numerous leadership changes, which is a tribute in, in a, but, uh, by itself, as we all know. Historically, the Athletic Council has been a major force of positive influence for Fairfax County citizens through the years. Over the past three decades, the Athletic Council has forwarded many important recommendations to the Board of Supervisors on programs, policies, procedures, budget impacts, it goes on and on. And Steve was right in the middle of each one of those huge projects as a member on committees or in leadership positions. He promoted logic, consensus, authorship, and presentation strategies to name a few of his talents. I do not recall a single recommendation the Athletic Council has sent to the Board of Supervisors that was turned down. All have been adopted. They, they, it's been an outstanding journey and the, and the citizens of Fairfax County have benefited. Steve was a huge influence in those successes and a person that will be sorely missed going forward. In view of that very brief resume on Steve McLaughlin, I believe we need to recognize and never forget his significant accomplishments to the past through an existing prestigious county award platform going forward, such as the Champions of Character Award. By website definition, these awards honor youth, coaches, and parents for extraordinary service in pursuing victory with honor on and off the field of competition. Instituted by the Fairfax County Athletic Council, this program aims to support the ennobling tradition of amateur athletes in cultivating teamwork, leadership, good sportsmanship, and community service, while modeling the basic traits of good character, respect, responsibility, caring, trustworthiness, citizenship, and fairness. These words are Steve McLaughlin that honorably describes what he stood for in the service for Fairfax County. Therefore, in view of all that, I make a motion to permanently name the current annual ceremony as follows, the Stephen A. McLaughlin Fairfax County Champions of Character Awards. Additionally, upon successful approval of this motion, I request that the Fairfax County Athletic Council facilitate and monitor the swift movement of this action through NCS and its normal reporting structure, ultimately gaining Board of Supervisors approval if necessary as a permanent part of their recognition program as soon as possible. So in summary, I, I his impact on what we do and what we've done is huge. And we need to remember that going forward. And I think that that platform is a great place every year to do that. So I make that motion officially. This is looking this is for a comment and I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Yeah. I Lula, I'm, this is my counsel I'd like to speak to. Um, so a couple things to think about. First, I, I wholeheartedly agree we should do this. Second, um, I think that we may want, I, I don't, I hadn't thought about it until listening to what, what Mark said, what I'm about to say. So I apologize if, if my words are a little jumbled, but I think we need to give Steve either a cha the Champions of Character award, award from his district or a special champion, Champions of Character Award, like a, 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 a recognition um, at the ceremony, hand something to 
to his family if they're willing to be there or or have something that that Mark and, and others that have been so close to his family can hand to them. But I just um I, I I think yes we can we can we can and should rename it. I just think that we should go a step further and at the next Champions of Character Awards event give Steve posthumously a Champions of Character Award and present it to to his family. I don't know if that's from his district or countywide or whatever the best way to do it is, but I, I think we should also do the award. Mike, Mike, let me chime in on this if you don't mind. Uh, um, what the progression of the event, the way I see it, was to officially name that ceremony after Steve, and to work out the details, such as what's your recommendation, and there may be others as well. Um, uh, you know, at a, at a later point. Um, as soon as possible, but to get the official, uh, you know, thing out there, applications are going to go out and things have to, and there's a lot of other small details that have to go with this. So there is a progression. I think there might be a place for that. Um, certainly uh, the kickoff would, 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 we would invite those close to them, but uh, that that's for another day. The, I think today it should be full recognition by the council that this is important to us enough his influence and history that the awards uh, be named after him. And then we'll, we'll work out those other details um, based on input from a lot of folks because it just hit everybody cold here. So that's Mark, my that, comment about it. That, that's, again, this is, for the record, this is Mike Thompson. I, I, I'm not disagreeing. I, I'm simply saying that we should not end here. That's all. That, that we shouldn't take this action and say we've completed it. We're done. Right. I think we should do the award, whether we do that tonight, whether we do that through a committee, you know, whatever the process is. I just don't want us to say, oh, we renamed it, mission accomplished, checkbox, and move on. That's all. Oh, oh, Mike, trust me. Anybody on that council ought to know that I'm not going to let that happen. You know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, anyway. Ms. McLaughlin, you have your hand raised? I do. Um, I just wanted to say um, how much I fully support this. Um, while Steve and I share a surname, we we were not um, related, and uh, but I did have the good fortune of serving with him on the Synthetic Turf Task Force. Many years of my work as the liaison of the school board to the Fairfax County Athletic Council. Um, everything that Mark described about Steve um, is just. A, a mere tiny reflection of what an incredible human being he was and all that he gave to Fairfax County. Um, as a fellow athletic family, I'm just so grateful um, for all the service that Steve brought. Um, my heart goes out to his family and every one of you on this meeting call who knew him far better than I, but he, he was just a true gentleman and um, I, I can't emphasize enough anything that can be done to honor this man's incredible legacy. Um, a beautiful thing. And uh, Mike, I think you and Mark are on the right track. Um, you know, get the blessing of the athletic council and then uh, a, a committee, especially those who knew him best. Uh, I, I know for certain having listened to Supervisor Palchuk's, um very um, thoughtful uh, reflection and remembrance of him at the board meeting. Jason, thank you for sharing that to all of us, by the way. Um, you know, it's it's just one step in, in um, the right direction to honor such an incredible man. So thank you. Are there any other hands raised? Any other discussion? I'm not seeing any other hands. Lula. Very good. Um, so with that, is there any objections? No objections, so move. Thank you so much for that, Mark and, and, uh, and Mike. Appreciate that, lovely. Uh, just, just one last thing, this, this document will be sent to everyone just to have it as information and we'll go forward and let everybody know. Very this good, thank you. This is Barbara Lowry. I'm glad to serve on a committee to pursue what we do further. Okay. Well, 
Barbara, yeah, I'll, Barbara, thank you. As as I recall, I think you're on the, you may be on the team of character committee. If not, I think you just volunteered for it. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, very resourceful. All right. Very well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Moving um, to the next agenda item: committee reports, uh, communications with Fairfax County Partners. Gary. Thanks, Lula. Um, yeah, I'll start. Um, I will say I'll just do a bit of a summary and then I'll ask uh, fellow team members of the uh, subcommittee to chime in. Um, <clears throat> I know that there's been some developments and there's been several meetings held about the concerns for the uh, uh, for for this subcommittee that started back um, almost a year ago now, back in September, October. Um, and it's important to note that, um, you know, we, we brought this up several years ago. I brought this up several years ago. I, I want to say five years ago um, where uh, Steve McLaughlin actually took the message and got Jeff Plattenberg involved in it. Um, some of you that have been around for a while were, will remember that we did this almost five years ago and then we have started anew um, and the, the the committee continues to meet. Um, we did. We've had a couple of sidebar meetings, um, and I do believe that the next step in the process is NCS is is supposed to coordinate another meeting um, that will include all of the partners. Um, and I think from the minutes of the last meeting, uh, the agenda was going to be developed. I think uh, I talked to Karen. Um, between Karen, uh, Vicki, and myself uh, to develop that agenda for those partners to meet again. Um, as an aside, I know that uh, I know that Rob's got a couple of comments. Lula may have some, and and hopefully Megan, we do appreciate your championing championing the effort here to try to find solutions that we've been working so hard to um, to find. Um, it's important. I want to absolutely restate that the issue is not gone away. It is it is a problem um, and it's been identified and I know there's been several different types of conversations about the communications, but um, the importance of this subcommittee is for me is that the nine members of the uh, magisterial districts and the the individual sport representation. Um, we are. We were put together to represent the entire uh, county on athletic issues, and we have unanimous unanimously discussed in multiple meetings that this communications is a problem. It's a it's an issue that needs to be resolved. And we have all raised our hand and volunteered to be part of the solution, and we want to continue on that effort. So the committee is not done. We are moving forward. And um, recently, Rob submitted um, kind of a summary of, of the issues that have been discussed at different levels. Um, and I, I think that document needs to be entered into the record as well if it's not already been done so um, and I think it's important that um, that we continue moving down this line to resolve the issues. Um, that's kind of my summary of where we're at. Uh, I would I, I would like to ask um, Rob to say a few words and then maybe Mark Abbott, Lula and Megan if they could say a few words about it as well. Yeah, hi, yeah, this is Ron. Um, yeah, Gary referenced a new document that we put together based from the notes of a previous uh, committee meeting. Um, in the new document, we did come up with, uh, I think it was 12 or 13 uh, bullet point solutions to some of these issues. Um, and hopefully Jason can share that with everybody on the Athletic Council and we can sort of work from there. I think what I'm excited about, I think what we're all excited about is is 
that hopefully we're, we're in that solution phase um, where we all work together to help each other, where we help the community use office, NCS, community users, and, and individual schools throughout Fairfax County. Um, we've identified the problems. We may not all agree on the problems or that there are problems, but certainly from the community use side and, and also I think from many of the, the schools as well, as you know, I sort of speak on behalf of both, um, there are existing issues. And again, as Gary said, those those issues certainly precede March 1st, I think, um, when we made some changes with community use and, and procedures. Uh, I think it's just uh, sort of exasperated um, the issue uh, from the community use side of things. So uh, excited that we're moving forward and hope, hoping that we all can continue to work together uh, for solutions for all of us. Thank you, Gary. Mark, you want to add in anything? Mark Abbott. Yeah, Gary, I uh, echoing all the sentiments and all of the, uh, the the conversations we've had. I think we're we've been working on this. It's been a challenging situation, and I think the more time we we can spend on it, and the the more uh, the the folks that get involved in it, I think it's important that the school uh, FCPS recognize that this is a serious issue. It's not just something that we're a little bit having a little, you know, just we're upset for no real good reason. I mean, this is a when you're talking about community use and having all the cancellations we've had and all the challenges we have in running our programs uh, on behalf of the school system, because the kids are all we share the same kids. I think it's something that uh, as we've all discussed and and we've concluded that it's serious enough that we need some sort of a solution. And I agree with you guys. I think we're heading toward that solution phase and I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. But again, it's been a long time and it's been a lot of complaining and uh, I know we're all tired of all of that phase of it. And hopefully we'll we'll get to something that's meaningful. But thank you, Gary, for uh, for sharing that. And I'm, I'm glad it's finally uh, seems to have some like Megan and other folks that are are pushing this thing through and Kathy Smith and, you know, others who are now involved. So I appreciate that. Lula, how about you, you had a couple of key comments on the uh, the cost side that were important to you. I remember. Well, yeah, I was just I was just going to say that there is nothing more that I can add uh, with 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 what's already been said. But th there is that something that we need to look at factor in when we're looking at um, what Bob has mentioned solutions. We've got to look at those solutions because it has had an economic impact on a lot of organizations and that ec economic impact is is staggering and that's something that should be brought to the forefront front as as well um so hopefully not hopefully i'm sure they're part of the bulletproofs and that's something that we'll be looking uh, in terms of finding a solution for that as well um megan we appreciate everything that you're doing to help us with this um from an FCPS uh, board perspective, can you share any info with us? Uh, sure. Um, well, just so the council understands, uh, you know, I had been hearing murmurings of this issue. And then on Monday, when I was at the Sports Tourism Task Force, Gary, you know that uh, we had an opportunity to talk with Karen Avasado and uh, Bill Curran and, you know, really kind of talk a little bit more about intentionality of how to find some solutions here, knowing that we would be having tonight's meeting. So I was able to arrange um, a, a, a meeting today with Bill Curran and Marty Smith. For those not familiar, Marty Smith is our chief operating officer. He is the third in command of FCPS, and he too has been engaged now with Deputy County Executive uh, Chris Leonard, um, and recognizing the importance of this issue. So uh, in our hour-long conversation today, uh, it was most important that Marty wanted this council to know how seriously FCPS takes this issue, um, that we absolutely want to restore that sense of partnership. 
um, that we really appreciate the work where people have, you know, they outlined what have been the ongoing problems, uh, the solutions absolutely are going to have to include things like um, deadlines and accountability. Uh, one of the most important things that uh, Marty and I talked about is a mindset um, and something that was mentioned earlier by Mark. Um, our community users are our FCPS families and the community users, when we trade out a school activity and, and replace it with what was a community activity, we just took one population and we impacted another, all part of the same community. And so uh, I think that this work, I wanted to reassure you all in talking with Marty, it's making inroads, absolutely. Uh, and I recognize that, that so much of this is gonna be about the details, community user agreements, making sure that all of our principals understand um, that this isn't simply our community users are secondary. Um, there is a, a, a true partnership and what that means is you can't just bump um, community users. Um, the moment that the school suddenly has uh, an event that they that they that comes in after the fact is quite honestly. So, um, you know, I, I, I guess what I would say um, also Karen helped me understand how much this worked really well for quite some time where NCS has four regions and FCPS had four staff that helped coordinate directly with the regions. And so um, my advocacy is also that we look at what was really working well and why would we want to move away from things that were working well. Uh, I, I also wanted to let you know that um, Karen Avasado's team um, provided me and I was able to share with FCPS just early this morning some really great data analytics on what the total cancellations look like and FCPS did a real quick run and from what they could determine out of 3,800 canceled events, 2,400 of those canceled events uh, were occurring in 22 of our 200 schools. So uh, predominantly elementary. Why all this matters is that I wanted to make sure you all know that um, from you know Vicky's office to Bill Curran and to Marty to myself, you know we we recognize let's really uh, get a, a handle again on what's generating these problems so that that list of comprehensive solutions can be deployed effectively. Um, I apologize again, I tend to go into way too much detail, so I'll stop talking for now, but um, I, I do wanna just really encourage everybody for whatever frustrations you've been feeling, I wanna make sure you know you're heard, and I also wanna make sure you know that we really emphasize this isn't about percentages, it's not about 2%, 3%, 3.5% of total cancellations, it's what is happening with these thousands of cancellations and how do we, we prevent them going forward to the fullest extent possible. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Megan, and I'll, I'll just close out and say that um, I am very encouraged um, moving forward, and it sounds like we are moving towards the phase where we can you know, stop the complaining and start trying to find solutions to the issues. And Megan, we appreciate your, appreciate your advocacy on that. Um, Lula, that's all I've got from a committee report. Um, and unless uh, Vicki, I don't know if Paul Hatcher is on, but if Vicki or Paul wanted to um, say anything on behalf of the committee as well. Yeah, I'll I'll join in. Thank you. Um, thank you for the overview um, of everything that's going. First of all, I'd like to give my sincere sympathies and to the loss that this committee has had recently. I didn't know Stephen very well, except for the few times that I did meet him when we used to be in person. And he was such a lovely person. So I, I can imagine the relationships that have been 
just unbelievably torn, you know, because of his loss. So I do want to express that to everybody. And I know I was, I was, I, too, I, I, I feel a sense of loss too, because he was such a, a person in the community. And um, as far as looking at it, we are getting the data. We did get, thank you, um, Megan, for sending the data to us, you know, so we can review it. Around, um, we're working with NCS on getting that, but I think you got it before we did, you know, on some of that data. So thank you for sharing that. And I am looking at it and reviewing and going through some numbers, which I'll talk with NCS about from our viewpoint ever. I think no one can underestimate that there is a problem. I think where where we're at on finding and I and Mark Abbott, I do believe, I believe it was you or maybe it was Ron. You know, we are working towards solutions. I know we are looking at since we started in March, which I know a lot of individuals do not understand why we did it. From our standpoint, it has been a gold mine because now we see where we didn't have eyes before, you know, on has having some of the information because we never had that look. We were in the dark around. So that has been great and helpful for us and seeing some of the problems. I have been working with NCS on um, starting up for time specific specific time points uh throughout the year where we hit up principals for them to be more proactively engaged in putting in their activities around we before we had asked them to put it in august and review in january that's too big of a bite with as large as we are and as fluid as schedules are that is too large so we have broken it down to the seasons and with a reasonable amount of time that the schools have to put them in. So at least season by season, we're going to be closer than what we probably ever have, you know, by going and having reminders sit down to the principals and say for the first one, for example, they need from August to November. So that gives them a shorter window to look at what events they're having in their schools. The second one's from December through February. So that gives them a smaller window to look at. So hopefully these, these long views will be shortened up a little bit and we'll have more accuracy from the school side of putting in their information. So there are a lot of different conversations and we are looking to see how we can get better. Overall, I always believe there's room for improvement no matter what and who you are, you know, for that. But I, I think realistically though, and I think Megan alluded, and it's not about the percentages, but I do think that we're never going to get to zero, you know, that that's not going to be happening, you know, because it's just too large a volume of schools and too many intricates. But we can cl get closer than the three that we are. We're at three percent. I think we get closer because we do understand that every impact, every cancellation is not just a, a, a line on a spreadsheet. These are people. We get that. We definitely get that around. And it's and even though it's. As I think, Megan, you said trading one versus the other. That's true. We don't want to do that. We want to try to find a place for everyone, but we just have so much volume around. Um, but that's where I'm going to leave it. We're going to continue on with NCS. Uh, we have some ideas to bring to the tables, too. Um, I asked NCS to provide me all of their, I don't need names. I just need from the different organizations, their participation numbers, because I want to geoplot those on Fairfax County um, on the map to see where what areas CYA covers, what areas SYA covers, to see if we have overlapping or oversaturation in certain parts of the county too. I think that would be helpful information because I do know that, I believe it was you, Lulu, that said that you've had an unbelievable amount of increase in soccer participants this year. Around. And if we have such, I mean, I think we have multiple phases that are happening. If we have a high increase and I totally get why parents want John and Susie out there because they've been at home for the last year and a half for COVID. So maybe that's why we're seeing the increase. But if we have a higher saturation in some of the areas that perhaps are having renovation, we need to coordinate that thought process too. Because a renovation knocks the school completely out, you know, or at least partially out. So if we have a high saturation around the Chantilly area, for example, and I have two schools that go into renovation, you know, for high participation for a high renovation area, then that could be adding to the problems. So we're looking at, now that we have the ability to look at all the data points, I think that is gonna bring some good results. So that's what I have to put in. Megan has her hand up. 
Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I forgot to add one really important um, update. Uh, Marty Smith also noted that um, his team went back and looked at the communications letter that was being generated when a cancellation was going to occur, recognized that it was very de minimis in its wording, very short with no indication of supports that would be coming from the community use office to help with any reassignments and finding um, alternative locations. And so uh, that's another thing that FCPS is changing so that the community user, if a cancellation has been requested, that they be reassured that that FCPS wants to partner with that community user, that it's not simply a so sad, too bad, um, you know, best best of luck to you. So uh, I thought that was another important thing to say because uh, I personally have had um, people reach out to me with um, the communications being generated by that system and, and really leaving people feeling left high and dry. And that's certainly not what FCPS wants to do. Right, and that is a valuable point, Megan, because that is something that is a challenge as well as sometimes it's uh, it's kind of short and sweet and it doesn't, you know, it, it, there's no feel good when it's short and sweet. So we will continue to march forward and we will continue to address this and um, hopefully it gets the attention that it does need and hopefully the solutions will um will work tremendously um i do see vicky's hand up jason i don't know if anybody else has their hand up i think that's yeah really yeah if, if i may here thank you megan for bringing that up it was on my notes but i skipped over it around um we are looking at that language in fact uh, the language is is generated for the most part through ncs so i asked them this afternoon to send me their scripts and we're going to work on that at our next meeting because it is abrupt and even if um you know, I think we can, instead of your situation is canceled, maybe we can put there's a conflict and we're trying to resolve it, but we wanted to notify you. So I do agree that that is from the onset, because if I were a user, let's say the school made a mistake, which is what we bring in. We call it every single time there's a cancellation to a school. But let's say they made a mistake and they entered in wrong. Imagine the trauma, you know, to the user group if they get that generated. Uh, that automatic email, you know, that says, hey, you're canceled and it was a mistake. So I'd like to have some leeway and some opportunities for us to change that narrative if it is a mistake or if there's an opportunity for them to have some more time in there. So thank you for bringing that up, Megan. Okay, Lula, I'll turn it back over to you. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, field allocation policy, Mike, would that be you? Yes, ma'am. That's me. This is Mike Thompson. Um, so we had we had a meeting. It um, the end of it became strange because we were we found out about um, the untimely death. Um, so it was kind of a it it ended in a strange place. Um, we had a, I think a good conversation about um, tournament stuff in particular. I think that uh, hopefully we'll have some written documents to look at. There are some it's, it's becoming clear that there are some additional issues that are probably longer term issues um that that we're probably not taking a second bucket in other words so i think there's a bucket of well i should back up so everybody knows the allocation policy is actually a policy that has to go to the board of supervisors to be approved so it's not an easy oh we want to do this one little thing or that one little thing and just keep throwing the policy to the Board of Supervisors 17 times a year to get changed. So we tend to do it in buckets and, and kind of over time. Um, we knew we had this 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 tournaments issue uh, to deal with, and, and I think we have a, an approach for that. There are some other issues. Um, the one that may be in the immediate bucket is this, this question that came up um, I don't think Bill's on the phone. I didn't, at least I, I don't, he may still even, Bill Curran had brought up, which is this issue of uh, schools um, recommending or, or dictating to, to kids, uh, I'm sorry, that clubs, teams dictating to kids that they can't play on school teams. 
um, and and the the council had wanted us to address that. And so there, there's a couple different ways to potentially do that to deal with the the, the tournament stuff. Um, we should have some written drafts that that the committee can start working through, and and hopefully finalize relatively quickly. Um, but there are some other issues that have begun to accumulate that I think will probably take up sometime this fall, um, and and kind of begin to deal with this this kind of cluster of of small but but various issues to help NCS and and deal with issues that have popped up with the clubs. But I think the two issues that we're going to deal with at the front end are uh, tournaments, which will probably take the approach off the model that we had done, and are um, this issue with the clubs uh, and the schools. Uh, you may recall that the, some, of, some of the clubs had told kids they could not be on the club team if they participated on the school team. And the athletic council wanted us to, to look look at and propose potential ways to address that. So we're we're doing that as well. There any questions? No, thank you for that, um, Mike. So we are going to move right along um, with. Oh, wait a minute, Megan, or maybe she, Megan McLaughlin, I think, put her hand up. Oh, there she is, Megan. Yep. Sorry, everybody. I just, Mike, I really wanted to put a fine point on what you said. Um, you know, we run into that problem. You know, within our schools from one sport to the next when kids are carrying over from fall into winter into spring and how coaches will just you know have issues with kids playing multiple sports within a school and then the the travel and club teams versus um high school sports so um as a fellow high school athlete myself and uh, three sons who played multiple sports i i can't emphasize enough how important this is that and anything I can do at the school level to just be a voice and advocate and support for this. Uh, we're all here to help young people have the richest, fullest experience they can and putting restrictions on them seems so antithetical to supporting students and players. I, I just, I'm really glad you're working on this and thank you. Yeah, no, and, and I would say the one, to put a fine point on your fine point is that the one important thing is that all the coaches clearly need to be able to communicate freely and, and the kids need to need to feel because you don't want the kid not telling the baseball coach about his pitches that he's doing on a, on one team and not telling his, his high school coach about the pitches because of the, the potential damage or or a kid that gets knocked knocked around and may get a concussion on the club team not telling the high school team what's going on we and and by creating these restrictions, we also cut off that kind of communication. And then, though, and so we, we just want to encourage the communication and openness between them. Rob, you had your hand up. Quality baseball reference, Mike. That's all I have to say. I, like <laughs> I was, I, I, I was I, impressed I, with that. I, I support, I support all the sports, Rob, all the sports. <laughs> Very good. Any other comments, questions? Then uh, we'll move right along to sports representatives. Jason? Yep. Uh, baseball, Rob? Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot other than um, excited about uh, the uh, development of Patriot Park North for both baseball and softball. And um, Susie can speak to it a little bit, but she and I have certainly been talking about um, her Falls Church High School issue and how we could potentially uh, help with that, where we all work together and we want to make sure that uh, we're supporting softball uh, as well. We're just finished up our um, high school baseball season and now we're heavy into a Little League All-Star season, if you will, for the youth side of things. Um, and uh, doing some real cool things. I, I think I mentioned at the last athletic council meeting, we are actually hosting uh, through the ABCA, a state of baseball uh, weekend uh, workshop uh, here in Fairfax County coming up in November uh, with representatives from USA Baseball, ABCA, Little League, Babe Ruth, Cal Ripken, Legion, and everybody 
uh, to, to talk, share ideas, network, collaborate, and everything else. So pretty cool that we're able to host that right here in Fairfax County. And that's built off uh, some things that we did locally. Gary was involved as well. So we're excited about all of that. That's all I got. Thanks, Rob. Uh, I don't believe anyone from basketball is on. Uh, fast pitch softball, Susie. Uh, first of all, just real excited, and maybe Karen will speak to it as well. Um, again, and thank you for the Athletic Council support for uh, voicing a desire to reestablish the APRT committee, which was created in 2007 that did the equity report on diamond sports. So uh, Board of Supervisors, thumbs up. And again, um, thanks to all of you for uh, your support with that. So that will be uh, starting up. And I just wanted to mention kind of a stealth thing that happens with community use and the schools. I can say this being a former public school coach, because yes, I needed green days. So what sometimes gets me a little frustrated is when a football team has their green day on a softball field that we find out at the last moment. And so we have practice scheduled, go, and then here comes the football team on the softball field. And that's happened at two occasions or things of that nature. So. That's also not being communicated. And again, I was a public school coach for quite a few years. And I understand that sometimes, you know, when you coach, you have to get there later. But again, that's also kind of a stealth frustration um, with the green days. And then particularly when I see football teams on a softball field and softball players in the community are not allowed to play softball because the football team's there for a green day. So um, again, just kind of a stealth thing out there. Um, and look forward to working with Rob and others uh, to get the equity issue. Uh, Falls Church has been extremely frustrating. Um, Louise Archer, so again, it gets back to communication. And I think a better job could be done with that and involving the individuals that are directly involved instead of them finding out after things have already happened. I think it would alleviate a lot of stress and angst and actually a lot of wasted time. So, but thank you. Things are moving forward. Uh, looks like uh, Rob, Megan, and Bill Curran have their hands raised. I just have a quick, quick shout out that I forgot. I uh, would like to all congratulate Susie for winning an, yet another state title. Uh, in softball. So, Susie, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Megan? Susie, congratulations. That's extremely exciting. Um, I don't want to steal Bill Kern's thunder because he's really the big guy instead of myself, but um, I did want to let um, the community know that just last week, um, Bill and I and staff from FCPS facilities toured Woodson um, campus to look at the baseball diamond problems with the visitors dugout flooding and the, um, uh, I guess it's the, maybe the, the box where the, uh, they're calling the games. Um, and then we toured the softball um facility and the that's where we had extensive conversation with title nine issues um that Susie was describing it's my understanding that there's at least seven um fields uh, within fcps's inventory that um, have title nine issues fcps has a plan to address them but um the plan versus the execution is what's really in question you know you can recognize it, plan for it, identify it, cost it out, but um, we've got to put the money toward it to get it fixed. So uh, th this was not something I was made, I was aware of until our softball families at Woodson raised this to my attention. And so now I'm working with um, Bill and our facilities and certainly alerting our new incoming superintendent about it. 
Um, and then we also looked at our tennis facilities um, where there's um, some major issues. At a macro level, I wanted to let you all know that uh, what we also learned is uh, we do not in FCPS have uh, dedicated funds to address our um, outdoor uh, athletic facilities. And that is a huge problem that I hope we can begin to tackle as well. Um, it's just the maintenance has gone um, un unmet for far too long. I don't know that this has really been brought to the board's level of attention, but it is now mine. And uh, I think some of you know what happens when that happens. So I'm gonna do my best to um, really uh, take that on. So Susie, don't hesitate to reach out to me if I can um, be a more effective advocate. And uh, sorry, Bill, I think I did just probably take over and say too much. In, in, for, the, for the record, insert, a lot of people are gonna hear a lot from Meg McLaughlin on, on that issue for a while until it's solved. Uh, Bill? All right, I'll be short and sweet on this one and save other comments for when we report out from the schools. Uh, Susie, to your previous comment of a green day going on on the softball field, nope, not gonna happen. Text me where, and I'm taking care of it now. Uh, it will not happen. There are things we will not do in the school system. Megan, you can close your ears if you want, because you may not want to hear some of the things I really want to say, but I'm not having it. So just shoot me a note. You, you have my cell number. Shoot me a text. I will deal with this tonight. Thank you. Amen, Bill. Yeah. All right. Moving right along, Jason. Got it. Uh, next football, uh, Mark Manna. Uh, really nothing to report in there. Ted Hollingsworth, are you on? Okay. I don't believe no, go ahead he and pass. is. Okay. Right. I didn't know if he joined late. All right. Uh, lacrosse, I don't believe anyone's on. Uh, soccer Council, Lou and Trish. Just uh, really quickly, um, everything's winding down. Uh, right about now, all the travel programs are winding up, so not much to report. Thank you. And uh, Volleyball Council, Robin and Marie. Uh, this is Amber. I think Rob may have had a drop off. He's at in Denver with his mom. Um, nothing much to report except that the spring um, seasons have now concluded. Um, summer. The schools are doing um, clinics for the junior uh, kids, for kids looking to start playing. And also the local clubs are playing at nationals over the next couple of weeks. That's it. Awesome, thanks. That's it, Lula. Great, thank you, Jason. Uh, matters of interest, school board? Actually, I have oh, a couple goodness. things tonight, Megan, if you want me to roll, or I don't know if you want to start off. Oh, no, I'm going to actually say I think I've said more than enough in tonight's <laughs> meeting. So I'll uh, I'll let you go for it, Bill. And if I think of anything, I'll come behind. All right. Pretty, pretty simple here. Uh, as you all can tell, um, I'm enjoying tremendous amount of support from Megan right now um, and helping move things that we've been trying for years to move along, move along. So, you know, more to come on that. And, and, and I believe that's going to be influential, so I appreciate the support of this group and certainly need support of Megan. Megan and I have worked together long before she was on the board, so this is, you know, just par for the course, I think, sometimes, which is really good. Um, we have wrapped up, which uh, after the last two and a half years, uh, wrapping up what was the most normal we've been since then is has been a pretty big deal. I can tell you all of my uh, DSAs and activities offices, I think, are happy to almost have what would look like a normal summer since even last summer was every day planning for what might or might not happen with COVID and the other situations we were dealing with and making things happen. So um, it, it's it's a, a time that I've really asked and, and told those offices to take some time away because we, we open up August 1st. And so it, it's a short, short summer and, and a short time for them to, to be with their families, but I'm hoping they are. Uh, to wrap up the spring season, we had multiple state champions. Um, Madison won in softball and boys lacrosse, uh, Langley won in boys soccer, South County in girls track and field, South uh, South Lakes in boys track and field, 
Oakton and boys tennis and Langley and girls tennis. So it, it was a, a another successful um, uh, season for us overall with the Virginia High School League with the, with our athletic programs with regards to that. Um, as you know, I, I really shoot for our programs to completely sweep. So Fairfax sweeps all of six A state championships, which we've done at times. Uh, the rest of the state doesn't like it when we do, but we've done. Um, but highly competitive season. I blame Rob Honey for not winning a state championship in baseball and not bringing that home to us. But other than that, we're doing just fine. Nobody laughed at that at all. And Rob's looking at his camera like I just like did it. I'm just teasing you, Rob. You had a great season. Huge upsets. I was following you. So um, those are all real positives. We are going into the, a little bit of a summer hiatus. If if there's if you're trying to get in touch with people at schools or need anything there, don't hesitate to call me because I will be around um, as we're we, we don't leave because we got a plan for opening for the rest of the division throughout the summer. Um, I appreciate all the support we've had the last couple of years though and look forward to just opening up and having somewhat of of a regular school year next year on the FCPS side and making it all work and and not having to to be do big big brain stuff because that's not really my strength all the time. So we're really looking forward to, to getting the good stuff. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Um, any questions, any comments? Megan, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just I remember the other thing that Bill and I wanted to update everybody on is, um, you know, we're continuing to emphasize the stadium bathrooms issue. Um, you, you know, I might have noted in the last meeting that, yes, the school board um, did pass the resolution similar to the Board of Supervisors instructing the county executive and the superintendent to work on a plan, both a financial plan and a, a installation plan. Um, for them, but uh, I think we're going to really need and benefit from the continued vi vigilance of the Fairfax County Athletic Council because the more meetings I'm in, the more I keep hearing um, various elected officials talk about the year end funds and things they're going to need for these year, you know, that they want to draw the year end funds for. So uh, I think we're going to need to um, stay very, very vigilant on making sure that the stadium bathrooms don't lose steam. Um, and I want to thank everybody again um, for the council's support. It was great to be able to um, share that with the school board. Um, but I may be coming back to the well again um, as we get closer to make sure Chairman McKay and the board of supervisors understand that uh, we don't want to see this uh, get pushed back in any way. Um, so, Bill, I don't know if I captured that correctly or not. That's always a tremendous job. <laughs> uh, Bill, do you have your hand up? I do, but I shouldn't. So. OK, <laughs> very good. Moving right along, Park Authority. Anybody from Park Authority? Am, am I the only one? I'm getting a head nod, so I guess I, I guess I'm the only one. I I don't have a a huge update other than to say that uh, you know we continue to as just as it is the for the high schools getting through their most complete normal season. Clearly, there's huge demand uh, for not only the athletic fields but all of the park facilities. I mean, it's it's just incredible the number of people who want to play golf, who want to use the trails. Who just want to be in the parks and so uh kudos to to our teams who are trying to stay up with that but also thank you to everybody who's been a little patient at times when you know grass got gets cut a day late uh or something like that as as we try to get everywhere but um you know there, there's no real specific update i think you guys have already seen the chart i think gary had asked for the um the chart of the upcoming field stuff i think that was mailed around a month or two ago, I don't think there's many any significant updates to that. I will, in in, in our baseball themed meeting, let everybody know that fingers crossed. Eight nine months from now, we're cutting ribbon on a on a baseball complex, so that that construction continues to go well. Nice. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Fantastic. Um, on to neighborhood and community services. Uh, Mark or Karen, do you all have anything? Because I, I was just going to mention a, a few things. 
No, go, go ahead, Lord, and I'll come in after you. You're the big cheese. Well, thank <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, number one, I uh, just wanted to say good evening again to everybody. Um, and uh, similarly, I want to offer condolences to, uh, uh, you know, for the loss of, of Steve McLaughlin. Um, to, to the points that were, were brought up earlier about um, uh, what we'd like to do in, in recognition of him, I do want to make sure that you all know and reassure you that NCS will work um, with speed and, and uh, uh, make sure that those requests um, and what you, you uh, want to, to move forward uh, to honor him uh, come to fruition um, as soon as possible. Um, the, uh, the other piece is that I want to just make sure that everybody, and, and thank you, uh, Lula, for sharing with everyone about uh, Pulley's um, situation, but I, I did want to reassure everyone that, uh, that um, the, the exercise that, that we went through uh, with Pulley's position was not a reduction in force in any way. Um, we're, we're doing a realignment in the, in the agency to become a little more efficient. And I think the way that will be uh, structured will help to uh, have a few more uh, boots on the ground. And um, Pulley is will be at our mock community center um, where we're trying to capitalize on his experience in, I believe, what is it, the Navy um, when he was in uh, the military, as well as his experience in Arlington that he had running some of the uh, community centers. Um, of course, for the Department of Defense and with uh, Arlington County. So we, we definitely uh, look forward to, to what he brings to those facets of, uh, of community support for Fairfax County. Um, the, uh, the other piece that I, I wanted to say is that I'm, I'm also excited about the APRT reconvening. Um, of course, I wasn't a, a part of it, what, 15 years ago, I think, but um, I think it is exciting that, that we will um, be able to, to reconvene and make sure that, that we have updated um, recommendations, uh, policies and practices in place to ensure equity, um, uh, gender equity. Um, another thing that, that I just wanted to mention um, is uh, about two, two and a half weeks ago, we met with, um, with Chairman McKay, with uh, Supervisor Smith, um, with Marty, with, with Chris Leonard, with um, with a uh, school board member, uh, Kapersky. Um, and, you know, I, I just wanted to say that one of the largest tenants that came out of that meeting was their emphasis on relationships. So I, I know we, we've been talking a lot about, um, you know, the, the impact to, to families, the impact to our organizations, uh, but it sounded like to me, they really want to make sure we get back together with FCPS and NCS back to basics and that we're, creating and establishing a good working relationship, which lends itself to ensuring that we have developmental and trusted relationships in the community on the school administration side, you know, folks who are in the schools uh, and on the NCS uh, scheduling side. So I, I did want to emphasize that. And I, I just appreciate the fact that you all have come up with the, the list of solutions and recommendations. And I, um, I was very excited to see that. Our focus will be on, um, and thank you so much for those uh, and doing them so quickly. Um, the other piece is that, uh, you know, in, in, in that meeting that I referred to, a focus was on uh, what policies uh, we have in place that, uh, that impact um, our uh, community members, families, um, I guess in a uh, uh, unintentional way, the impact them negatively. Uh, someone mentioned the, the economic impact to, to our organizations. We definitely did focus on the impact, not just to the orgs, but also to our families, those who use our programs, our sports leagues as childcare, um, you know, those who, uh, who scrape together uh, funding to, to make sure their kids can register or be uh, registered in the programs. Um, and we wanna make sure that we aren't creating uh, any, any unintentional consequences uh, for them or barriers to them to practice, to games, tournaments, all of that. So uh, the the super the supervisors, the chairman and the, the board members, uh, school board members definitely um, were, were uh, encouraging us to, to focus on those relationships and making sure that we mitigate the impacts, the negative impacts to families and the kids that we serve. And then finally, I, I did just want to mention 
that our, our goal in the NCS, and I, I know that FCPS is on board and our, our, our colleagues and counterparts um, want to ensure that we come up with a plan together and with, with our community advocates, with the athletic council, with school administration and administrators at the schools to ensure that we have a good plan to reduce the rate of cancellations and the percentage of cancellations. So it's not one or the other, but we want to make sure that we're looking at both of them and that we we truly have a plan that works for all stakeholders um, and that we, we mitigate that negative impact to those who, who you all represent and advocate for that don't typically have a voice um, or a, a seat at the table. So I just wanted to mention those few things. Um, sorry for speaking so long, but um, I'm very encouraged by what you all have shared with us, by the data that we're seeing, because I know that there are corrections that we can make and just uh, thank you all so much for your dedication, um, thoughts, and progressiveness when it comes to coming up with solutions. Thank you. Mark? Nope, all good. Summer starts tomorrow. We're working on the fall. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Anyone, uh, anyone else from Neighborhood and Community Services? <laughs> no? Okay, drop the mic there, Mark. <laughs> uh, any new business? None? Okay, old business. Well, we've touched, several people have touched on the AP, APRT, so I'd like to make this official. Susie, are you still with us? Susie? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, good. So, Susie, I'm so proud and excited to say that the Board of Supervisors voted 10 to nothing to, and I, I, I actually want to read, read uh, what uh, the letter that uh, Chairman McKay sent. The Fairfax County Athletic Council recently voted unanimous, unanimously to request the Board of Supervisors reconvene the A. P R T. Then he goes on to say, I they, therefore direct staff to reconvene the girls fast fast pitch softball equity action plan review team. So congratulations. Actually, we're super excited um, that they they saw our vision and they voted 10, ten, uh, ten to nothing. And uh, we're going to move forward with the APRT. So congratulations. Good job. Yep. Thanks, everybody. Any other uh, old business? Yeah, good stuff. Any other old business? Does anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn this meeting. This is Gary from Sully District. <laughs> and Mike Thompson seconds very loudly. <laughs> Any objections? <clears throat> so moved. Good stuff. Great meeting. Great meeting. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night.